So before we dig deeper into the course content, in this lecture I will be covering seven terms which you need to be aware of in the business analysis industry. This lecture will describe the common vocabulary necessary for working in the end and understanding the discipline of business analysis. Starting with the business analysis term itself, it is the application of knowledge, skills, tools, and techniques in order to determine problems which you need to resolve or opportunities which you need to pursue with, to identify the business needs and recommend viable solutions to meet those needs and support strategic decision making, to elicit, analyze, specify, communicate, and manage requirements and other product information, and to define the benefits and approaches for measuring and realizing value and analyzing those results. So business analysis is the application of knowledge, skills, tools, and techniques to, to, to gain these four benefits. In short, business analysis is the set of activities performed to support the delivery of solutions that align to business objectives and provide continuous value to the organization. Business analysis is conducted in support of solution development, and this solution development activities can be conducted through portfolios, programs, and projects, as well as ongoing operational activities such as monitoring, modeling, and forecasting. The practices defined within the PMI PBA guide apply wherever business analysis is conducted. So business analysis is the set of activities that will support the solution development throughout the portfolios, programs, or projects being conducted as part of the organization. The second term is the business analyst. Business analysis may be performed by any individual regardless of the person's job title. In the PMI PBA guide, the person who performs business analysis processes will be referred to as the business analyst. The term is being used in the broad sense and represents all the roles that are responsible for performing business analysis activities across industries or within organizations, regardless of whether the work is performed to support portfolios, programs, or projects. So this job title is given to whoever is performing the business analysis processes and activities. Many portfolios, programs, and projects require a team of individuals to perform business analysis, and in these scenarios, the term business analyst will also be applied to these or to those individuals. The third term is the product. A product is an artifact that is produced, is quantifiable, and can be either an end item in itself or a component item. Products are also referred to as materials or goods. A product can be tangible or intangible. For example, an organizational structure, a process, or a service. All these are types of a product. A service is the performance of duties or work for another party. Products are created or updated as parts of solutions to address business needs. Therefore, they provide business value to the organization. The fourth term is the product requirements, and it's a very important term for the business analysis discipline, as all the efforts and activities we will be conducting while performing business analysis activities will be around the product requirements. A requirement can be defined as a condition or capability that is required to be present in a product, service, or result to satisfy a business need. And the PMI PBA guide use the term product requirement to describe the types of requirements that are part of the business analysis effort. Product requirements are the primary focus of this guide and the term requirement without a qualifier is used to specify all product requirement types. And in this lecture, I'll be covering the four key types or the four main types of the product requirements. A product requirement represents something that can be met by a solution and addresses a need of a business person or group of people, a product requirement should be independent of the design of the solution that addresses this requirement. They, sh they should not be dependent on each other. Product requirements are specified to clarify and communicate a business need or a required capabilities 
for the organization or the key stakeholders of the organization. The professional and business analysis guide uses the term product requirement in the broad sense. Therefore, when performing the work of requirements elicitation, specification or requirements management, one may choose to indicate the type of requirement to be able to communicate whether the product requirement represents a need of the business, an aspect of the solution, or a product requirement for a particular stakeholder group. To provide clarity and context, product requirements can or are often categorized by type, and we have four types of the product requirements, starting with a business requirement, which describes the higher level needs of the organization, such as business issues or opportunities, reasons why an initiative has been undertaken, and measurable representations of goals the business is seeking to achieve. So this is the first type of the product requirements, a high level need for the organization, a business need or a business issue which we want to resolve or an opportunity which we want to pursue with. All these are types or examples of business requirements. Business requirements are used to provide direction for any solution so that the solution addresses the business need. Business requirements are typically defined before a portfolio component, program, or project has been initiated as they represent the reason why the portfolio component, program, or project has been undertaken or why the product should be, the product should be created or modified. So the business requirement is usually the first requirement that the business analyst need to elicit from the organizational stakeholders. We are usually defining these business or those business requirements before even a portfolio component or a program or a project has been initiated. An organization may have multiple business requirements, all other remaining product requirement types, such as stakeholder, solution, and transition requirements are typically defined within the context of a project. But the business requirement should be defined before the project is initiated. So stakeholder, solution, and transition requirements are the other three types. So the second product requirement type will be the stakeholder requirement, which describes the needs of a stakeholder, where the term stakeholder refers to an individual group or organization that may affect, be affected by or perceive itself to be affected by a decision, activity, or outcome of a portfolio program or project. Examples of stakeholders include customers, users, regulators, suppliers, and partners, as well as internal business roles of the organization. So the requirements of these people within the organization or even external to the organization are type of the product requirements and they fall under, under the stakeholder requirements category. The third type of the product requirements will be the solution requirements, describes the features, functions, and characteristics of a product that will meet the business and stakeholder requirements. Solution requirements are further grouped into functional and non-functional requirements. So what are the features, the functions, and the characteristics of the product at the end of the project? All these falls under the solution requirements types. Solution requirements types itself can be functional or non-functional. Functional requirements describes the behaviors of the product. Examples of types of functional requirements includes actions, processes and interactions that the product should perform. The data and rules needed to support functional requirements are typically elicited concurrently. The second type of the solution requirements will be the non-functional requirement, which describes the environmental conditions or qualities required for the product to be effective. Non-functional requirements are sometimes known as product quality requirements or quality of service requirements. Examples of non-functional requirements include reliability, security, performance, safety, level of service, and supportability. So if you are talking about the features of the product itself, they are functional requirements, while if we are talking about the environment around the product that will support the product performs well, they are non-functional requirements, and both are solution requirements. The last type will be the transition requirement, 
which describes temporary capabilities such as data conversion and training requirements and operational changes needed to transition from the current state to the future state once the transition to the future state is complete the transition requirements are no longer needed so whatever you need to move from the current state or the as is state to the future or to be state this is a transition requirement and of course once the transition is completed and successfully implemented these requirements are no longer valid these four types are very important the business requirements stakeholders requirements solution requirements and transition requirements in my pmi pba exam i had two or three questions where the question will describe a requirement and will ask you what is the type of this requirement now these are the four types of product requirements here we have another two types of requirements but they are not product requirements they are project requirements and quality requirements these requirement types are not part of the business analysis effort and they are not considered to be product requirements project and quality requirements focus on project execution and they are part of the project management effort so you need to understand the difference between the previous four types and this type the four types are related to the business analysis efforts and they are part of the business analyst scope while the project and quality requirements are part of the project management and the project manager scope because project and quality requirements are outside the scope of business analysis they are only discussed here to show context of their relationship to business analysis project requirement describes the actions processes or other conditions the project needs to meet examples of types of project requirements includes the milestone dates and the constraints of the project these are examples of the project requirements quality requirement describes any condition or criteria needed to validate the successful completion of a project deliverable or the fulfillment of other project requirements and examples of the quality requirements includes tests certifications and validations of the project the business analysis focuses on ensuring that the product is of sufficient quality through the development of non functional requirements project management focuses on ensuring that the processes performed to deliver the solution are of sufficient quality through the development of quality requirements when the solution adheres to non functional requirements and the processes to deliver the solution adhere to quality requirements this will maximize the probability that the solution will meet the business needs this figure depicts the relationships that exist among various categories of product and project requirements so the business analysis effort we have four types business requirements stakeholder requirements solution requirements and transition requirements the solution requirements can be functional or non functional and the project management effort includes the project and quality requirements a single business requirement may be supported by multiple stakeholder and solution requirement a single stakeholder requirement may be supported in many or by many solution requirements solution requirements may be written as functional or non functional and because transition requirements describe the transition from the as is to be state they support the implementation of stakeholder and solution requirements so here is the link between the product requirements and the project requirements another term is the product information throughout the performance of the business analysis process significant amounts of information are being created collected analyzed modified consumed and shared when product information is referred to in process descriptions as an input or as an output the reference is being made to the most common component of product information that is relevant to the process itself so all the information we will be creating throughout the business analysis activities and efforts will fall under the product information category the types of information the pmi ppa guide refers to as product information will include the business goals and objectives the requirements the analysis models we will be using the backlogs the user stories the product scope the risks assumptions constraints dependencies and issues 
all these are examples of product information. Product information can include different types or levels of detail. For example, requirements could refer to business requirements or stakeholder requirements and issues might be stakeholder issues or defects. Product information can take on the different states as various processes consume and produce the information. For example, at different points in business analysis work, requirements can be in a verified, validated, prioritized, or approved state. The product information may be stored in a variety of forms, such as tools, documents, notes, emails, and possibly in people's mind. Product information is by no means the only information relevant to business analysis processes. Additional kinds of information are used to create and analyze the product information throughout the course of performing business analysis. The type and form of the additional information could include the original source material from which elicitation results came, elicitation notes, emails with additional context about analysis and verbal or written comments from stakeholders about this information and how we got this information. We have also the solution term. A solution is something that is produced to deliver measurable business value to meet the business need and expectations of stakeholders. It defines what a specific portfolio component, program, or project will deliver. So it's the end result of the efforts we are doing, the solution. And the last term will be the stakeholder. In project management, a stakeholder can be defined as an individual group or organization that may affect, be affected by or perceive itself to be affected by a decision, activity, or outcome of a project. In business analysis, stakeholders also include those affected or perceived to be affected by activities and decisions related to the solution. In business analysis, stakeholder identification begins when business analysis activities are performed to define the business need and the situation statement and continues through the development of a business case and during the charter or the project charter development. It's imp imperative that the stakeholder list be revised regularly to retain its accuracy. So one of the key domains for the PMI PBA exam is managing the stakeholders. So it's a very important topic for the business analysis success. Business analysts work very closely with stakeholders often on a day-to-day -day basis and therefore they continue to make refinements to the stakeholder register as new information becomes available. The stakeholder register is the log or the document where you keep all the information about the identified stakeholders of the project. Maintaining the accuracy of the stakeholder register is critical because when stakeholders are overlooked there is a high chance that some requirements will be missed and this is something the business analyst should avoid in business analysis understanding the stakeholders identified in the stakeholder register is equally important when stakeholder characteristics are not known or understood the business analyst may choose techniques that are ineffective misunderstanding stakeholders may result in ineffective communication or collaboration with the stakeholders throughout the entire product life cycle and here is an example of the power interest grid one of the tools that we will use later on in order to analyze the characteristics of the identified stakeholders. This is all for the common vocabulary lecture. We covered seven key terms which I want you to be fully aware of before we move on with this course.